Character is different. Character is developed and maintained. It's the only thing you can change in recovery. Characters, my sponsor used to tell me all the time, it's a daily choice. It's a daily choice. And, you, you know, character will change over the course of your lifetime. You know, character comes from the Greek word character, actually, which means impression. To make an impression on something, when you press something in, they used to, like, take um, letters and they used to have, like, um, these uh, forms that they would press into papyrus, all these kind of things, that made an impression into the paper, right? And they said, look, there's a character. So that's how they used to print, was by pressing an impression onto paper and things like that. And so your character is the impression that you leave with people. You know, when you die, someone told me once that all souls stay connected to the earth until the last person that remembers them dies. That's why the only thing you lose permanently in life is time. If you remember people, they don't die. You know, my sponsor died three years ago. He's right here every day. <laughs> what are you doing, Chris? What the hell? Okay, are you thanking your addiction for showing up? You know, hey, you're focusing too much, you know, whatever, okay? Like, people don't die as long as you remember them, okay? And so, you know, you can leave, like, people can leave you a lot of money, but if they were once you get the money, you go, I will not remember you. <laughs> or you do your best to forget them if they hurt you, right? You don't want to remember them. So your character is the only impression. It's the only thing that you, it's your true, he said, Chris, your character is your true legacy in life. It's what you leave behind. It's the most powerful thing that you leave behind. And it's the only thing that you can change in recovery. And it should change over the course of your recovery. Okay? Because addiction robs us of our character. And keeps us from developing it even sometimes as a kid growing up. If you grew up around addiction, Okay, you get a real skewed sense of what a character is, okay? And so character has three, three parts to it here, okay? The first part is your integrity. And in your integrity, uh, the, it comes from the word integer, which just means, like, an integer is a whole number, right? It comes from the Latin word integritas, or integrity, which means wholeness or completeness, okay? So your integrity um, is just how complete of a person that you are yourself in all the areas of your life. And there's five parts of yourself there. How spiritually healthy and healed are you and complete? How emotionally healthy are you? How emotionally available are you to yourself? Okay, do you know what feelings are? Do you know how to manage them? Recognize them, communicate them, share them with other people and listen to them. Physical, how well do you take care of yourself physically? Intellectually, how does your thinking change as your addiction changes and grits worse? Okay, the more the addicted you get, the more crazy your thinking has to get right to justify it. That's why smart people have a hard time getting sober. Because <laughs> they can convince themselves a bad idea is a good one. So your thinking has to change the more addicted you get to justify it. And that's why it's harder for smarter people, okay? Socially, the people you hang around with at the end of your addiction are usually nothing like the people you hung around at the beginning. Okay, remember we've talked about that? Like I'd go to my drug dealer's house and at the beginning and get some meth and, hey, you want to come in? And there was some great, weird, I mean, you know, you know how like frazzled people look after staying up for a week, right? Okay, hey, you want to come in? I go, no, y'all look like freaks. So just give me my shit, let me go, right? And uh, at the end of it, you're like, I'll hang out if I can get some free drugs. <laughs> You're my people now, hey, you know? You start losing that, right? Okay, it's one of those yets. You, have you ever heard of the yets in the program? I haven't done that yet. They, there's a lot of yets that people have. And they, that's how they compare themselves out, right? I haven't been in jail yet. You know, I haven't hung out the crack house yet. Okay, having all, there's a lot of yets, right? Okay, that we can all have. So socially, you know, that has to heal as well. Okay? And um, the most important thing with socially and with, you know, relationship-wise is that you know, I, I just asked my sponsor, when are you ready to start dating again in recovery? And he said, would you want to marry you? He said, look at, you know, they didn't have, like, internet when I got sober. <laughs> you know, they had, like, um, in the paper, they had want ads. You actually had to, like, go to the paper and put in a want ad. He says, look at the want ads, Chris. They're all saying looking for instead of ready to be. He said, looking for instead of ready to be. And he, he, said, he said, would you want to marry you? Because you're not allowed to demand anything you're not ready, willing, and able to bring. I said, hell, I ain't got a job. 
you know, I have no money. And he said, wow, so you wouldn't want to marry you? No. He says, what does that tell you? I got some work to do, right, on myself. And the social part, too, is that you never have to fire anybody from your life. All you have to know is your bottom line. That's all you have to know. I used to tell people, like, you can go to my apartment, but just don't bring drugs. You know, a real addict will go, oh, sorry, <laughs> see you later. You don't have to fire them. They just won't hang around you, right? So if I go to people's houses and they have, if they have drugs or if I say, I just got to go. I always got an escape plan, got a way to get out because I don't know what people are going to do. <coughs> so your moral code is part of your character. It's just right versus wrong. Okay. What's right? What's wrong? <coughs> okay. And that gets really messed up with a late stage addict. Okay. Because I could justify any dishonest behavior when I was using. Okay. Like I never got invited back to anybody's house twice. Because there was some stuff leaving with me every time I left. People would call up and go, did you happen to see my watch when you were here, Chris? And I go, nope. Hang up, not since I pawned it. Right? Okay. Like, first year of recovery. Too. And that doesn't change just, you know, like we lies. If you're, if you're a thief, it's really hard not to boost, you know, your first year of recovery, you not to steal, whatever. And, and we were walking out of the store, my sponsor would go, empty your pockets. And I go, why? He goes, I'm not getting arrested for you. I go, okay, Bill. He goes, damn it, quit stealing. What is wrong with you? You have to act as if you're honest. Stop it. And I go, okay, Bill, sorry. You know, every time I would get out, walk out of his bathroom at, at the rectory where he was, you know, he's a priest, he would stay, be standing at the door and go, empty your pockets. I go, what? What am I going to steal out of your bathroom? He goes, I don't know. You're a thief and it's automatic for you. I'd be walking out of his house and he'd go, empty your pockets before you leave my house. I said, we're in the same room the whole time. He goes, you're sneaky. He goes, you are slippery and sneaky. Chris, you're this, one of the sneakiest, slipperiest dope fiends I've met in a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Even when I didn't feel like it, I had to act that way. You know, like when we were redefining my character, my moral code, because part of the steps, the first seven steps are all about redefining your character with yourself first. They're all about redefining your character. Well, the thing is, you get to decide what that is in recovery. I'm talking about the acting as if. Every time I'll act as if a certain way, you start believing it. That's what you're going to get. Well, and that's why you have to check. I'm never going to change. I'm going to stay right there. Well, we have to, we have to, as long as it's serving you and your highest good, it's okay. All right? And, you know, that's why he always said we have to check it out with other people. You know, and it's, it's promoting you. I still can't go over somebody's house and not go to their bathroom and not go through their medicine cabinet. Mm -hmm. I still have a hard time passing that one up. Yeah, well, he used to tell me, like, I wrote down on my list of character traits I wanted to develop, and I said honesty, and he goes, really? So every time from this point on for the rest of your life, because that's what you do in step four, five, six, and seven, you redefine your character as a man and a woman in recovery, right? And he'd say, so every time that you lie automatically, you're going to stop when you, get when you get awareness of it, and you're going to say, you know, David, I'm sorry I just lied to you. And you know something I'm trying to change in recovery? Can you forgive me and rebuild some trust with me? I said, I have to say that every time that I know I'm lying? And he said, don't put it down on this piece of paper saying you're willing to work on it if you're not. He said, you can't be dishonest and be sober. Dishonesty will lead you back into addictive behavior. And I was like, oh, and you know what? When I, when I would lie automatically to people in recovery, right, and I would tell them, I'd say, hey, I'm sorry, I just lied to you. They got it, right? They go, oh, I get it. You say, oh, yeah, me too, okay? And the first person I ever did it to was this woman that I danced with at the Joffrey Ballet Company. We were partners, and when you dance on stage with a, with a woman, there are times that, like, most women you're having to talk to. Get up on your leg. She's talking to you. Don't you drop me. Don't you whatever. You know, the, you know things like that. You're talking to each other constantly. Very few, very few times in life do you, when you're dancing with a woman on stage, that you don't have to say a word. You just got this thing, man. It's like really powerful, and it's this connection. And you walk off stage and go, "What the hell is that?" It's really, it's, 
It's amazing, right? And I had this with this woman, and she was up here in the company, and I was just down here, right? So she was way up here, and she kept asking for me as a partner, which means that I was going to start rising in the company. We went to this party, and I don't know why. I just, she shared something personal with me, and I shared it with somebody else, which I should not have done. She came up to me the next day, and she goes, you know, Jessica came up to me and said that you told her what I told you the other day. Did you do that? And I sat there and I went, I said, I don't know what you're talking about. Automatic line, right? And I was like, oh, I just lied. God, automatically, right? So I said, oh, I said, you know, Denise, I'm really sorry, but I just lied to you. And I said, I'm, there's something I'm trying to work on in recovery and I'm really trying to change that. And she looked at me and she said, you what? And I said, you know, I'm trying to work on a recovery. And I don't think she's going to be like other people in AA that go, oh, I get it. We're just liars. You know, we, just, we lie to lie, you know. It's just part of who we are. And she looked at me and she said, I can't ever dance with you again. Because you have my life in your hands, Chris, and my, my career. When I jump, I need to know that you're there. How am I ever going to trust you again? She went, walked right over to the director and she said, tell him I don't want him anywhere near me. And for two years, it kept me down here in the company. And I went to my sponsor and I said, you, you got me like demoted. You got me this whatever. It's your fault or whatever like that. He goes, you're the liar, not me. He goes, but I'm proud of you. You just might make it in recovery because you're willing to act as if. That's what men with character and integrity do, Chris. And a strong moral code. You actually told the truth that you lied. Right. No, that's, nope. yeah, no, you don't want to be a phony, right? We're talking about being a phony. I mean, that's just lying. We're not lying. So, so it's, it's kind of like what I've tried to tell other people before. It's all or nothing, right? You have to change your friends, change your, your character, change your... You just got to change you. You don't have to worry about them. So, you just have to have your bottom line. I mean, you can, you can still keep the same drug dealing friends and drug dealing friends. As long as they don't... Jeopardize your safety. Yeah, exactly. Well, you don't do drugs, they ain't gonna want to hang out with you. Know, you don't make right. money. If, if they, if, let's say they do, I mean, you're hanging out with them, and they're high all the time. Right. You know? I, mean, I don't hang around people that are high. Yeah, I mean, you won't, but I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Other people do. Yeah. Know? And I'll say, you know what? If it's a, th if it's a threat to my sobriety and early recovery, it's also about motivation, right? I used to ask my sponsor, "Can you go to the bar in early recovery?" And he goes, "What's your motivation for going?" <laughs> Can't go to the bar. Which motivation to hang around people who are high? Really? Like, are you really gonna have a connection? So. Okay, when you when you did say so act as if you're honest, what I got out of that was practice. Right. That's what I got. Mm hmm Yeah, you got to practice it. Okay. So, um, and your values are what's important to you. Late stage addicts, what's the most important thing to them? Keeping a stash. Right. <laughs> And the ability to use when they got to. Good for you, girl. All right. All right. That's, that's a late stage addict, right? Okay. So that is what we work on changing and maintaining. It's the only thing you can change. And it should change over the course of your life. My sponsor, when I got, I was 24, right? He said, Chris, when you're 50, I hope what matters to you at 24 is not what matters to you at 50. It should change over the course of your life because you mature and grow. Okay. So, there's, that's what the 12 steps help us do. They help us maintain and develop our character and keep growing with that. Right. They all go together, right? You can't separate one from the other. I love sex addicts who tell me, Chris, I can hook up and just leave it. Nothing else gets affected. And I go, uh-huh. Okay, we call that irrational thinking. We call that minimizing. Those are your defenses right there, right? You can't hook up with somebody and not leave a little part of you with them and take some of them with you. Okay? If you're a real sex addict, you can't date five people at once and have your life be manageable. And be honest, you're going to be lying to somebody, right? You're going to be lying to somebody. Okay, I know because I'm a recovering sex addict. <laughs> you are lying to somebody, okay? So that's what, that's what character is, okay?